how many of your companies are sales driven companies your company the one that you work for or the one that you own are you a sales driven company by sales driven i mean you ask a reasonably senior person from a sales driven company do you know your company's top line you ask this person this question today morning they will give you the number up to last evening sales driven companies monitor top lines on an online basis is your company sales driven doesn't matter you ask a senior person of a sales driven company do you know your top line says of course you ask that person do you also know your bottom line bottom line is usually a black hole so much so guys there are times where business owners don't even know whether their business has made a profit or a loss till the accounts department gives them that information this i find scary are we in business to generate top lines or bottom lines answer is bottom lines top line of your business you are constantly aware of bottom line you are clueless guys according to me every business person every business leader every vice president every ceo you should not only know your company's top line but by looking at the top line you should know your bottom line now let's say last year you see last year data you know both top line and bottom line let's say last year your company's top line was 100 and the bottom line was 20 this year you are monitoring top lines and the top line has become 200 what was the sale last year 100 profit 20 sale this year 200 can you guess the profit i'll give you three options option 1 40 option 2 less than 40 option 3 more than 40 which school of thought are you if 100 becomes 200 can 20 become 40 do you think it can become more than 40 or less than 40 if you said or if this company sales of 100 becomes 200 and profit of 20 becomes 40 or less than 40 i think some head should roll some people should not be around somebody is bungling up badly so right now i am in agreement with those of you who in your mind said when i asked you 100 becomes 200 what if two what will happen to profit if you said more than 40 i am in agreement with you but now let's continue discussing further how much more tell me if 100 becomes 200 is it possible 20 can become 60 and in case you said yes it's possible then my next question has to be can it become 80 and if you said now even now if you said yes then can it become 100 or can it become 120 answer is if 100 becomes 200 profit of 20 can become 40 it can also become 60 even 80 is possible 100 is also possible 120 is also possible beyond 120 not possible soon i'm going to give you the logic but before i do that out of these five options given to you 40 60 80 100 120 two of these are theoretical three are practical two are remotely possible three are in the realm of reality which two are remote possibilities if you said just now in your mind that the remote possibilities are 100 and 120 i must tell you no that's not correct guys if 100 becomes 200 20 becoming 40 and 20 becoming 120 are possible in theory the two extremes the reality is going to be squeezed in between now i'll give you the logic very very simple logic guys when i told you my sales is 100 and my profit is 20 what i have effectively told you is that my cost is 80 now tell me when my sales of 100 becomes 200 when will 20 profit become 40 that will only happen provided my cost of 80 becomes 160 that is not going to happen if sales will double every cost will not double Similarly when 100 becomes 200 when will 20 become 120 that will only happen provided 80 continues to remain 80 that is also not going to happen neither will all costs double nor will no costs double and therefore the reality has to be between these two extremes now tell me where did i get this first column information from that data i must have obviously extracted from a financial statement called pnl where that sales of 100 must have appeared on the right hand side 
and the cost of 80 must be the sum total of the left hand side which must have included items like raw materials and power and salaries and commissions and rent and many, many, many more items. The total of this must be 80 and profit is 20. This I have condensed and given to you in the form of column number one. Now, what question did I ask you? Question asked of you was, what if sales of 100 becomes 200? Tell me guys, if sales of 100 becomes 200, what is the possibility? That for a hundred sales, you were consuming raw material of 45. What is the possibility for 200 sales, you will consume 90 strong? For hundred sales, your power consumption was 5. For 200, can it become 10? Can. When your sales was 100, your salary bill was 9. If sales becomes 200, will you pay 18 to your employees? No. 9 might become 10, 11, 12. Or if the data given to you was not year 1, year 2, if it was month 1, month 2, then 9 can even remain 9. And folks, when people who brought you business worth 100, you gave them a commission of 10. If they bring you business worth 200, will you pay them 20? Yes, commission is proportionate. And when your sales was 100, you were paying a rent of 11. Because you sell 200, will you pay your landlord 22? Answer is no, 11 will remain 11. What I'm trying to tell you is, if you now start studying all your heads of expenses, nature-wise, you are going to discover against every head you will be able to write either the letter V for variable or the letter F for fixed. All your costs can be broken up eventually into two types, variable and fixed. And now when I tell you my sales is 100, cost is 80, profit is 20, sales has become 200, guess the profit. You should ask me, Anil, if you want me to guess your profit, give me the breakup of that 80. How much of that 80 is variable and how much is fixed? And only if I had told you, guys, the entire 80 is variable, there are no fixed. Only then, if 100 becomes 200, cost will become 160 and profit will become 40. But what if you were told the breakup of 80 looks like this? 60 variable, 20 fixed. Now, guys, can you guess the profit? Not difficult. If 100 becomes 200, 60 will become 120, 20 will remain 20, cost will become 140, profit will be 60. And what if the breakup was like this? And if the breakup was like this? And only if the breakup was like this, which is not going to happen. 100 becomes 200, all, no costs are variable, fixed remains fixed, profit will become 120. Question for all of you. Can you please tell me, when do organizations make more profit? When the fixed costs that they have to bear are less or more? Lower the fixed costs, higher the profit? Or higher the fixed costs, higher the profit? Common sense answer would be, lower the fixed costs, higher the profit. But guys, what does account say? When the fixed costs in case one was zero, what happened to profit when sales of 100 became 200? Profit also doubled. Sales doubled, profit doubled. In case 2, when your fixed cost was 20, profit trebled. In case 3, it quadrupled. In case 4, it quintupled. <laughs> and the profit went up the most when the fixed cost was the most. Lower the fixed cost, higher the profit, or higher the fixed cost, higher the profit. It appears that higher the fixed cost, higher the profit. So what is my suggestion? Guys, suggestion is not if you are business owners, don't go to office tomorrow and shoot out a memo. Let's double everybody's salary from tomorrow. Don't do that. Profit will fall. Suggestion is not that you call up your landlord and ask him, how much are you charging me as rent? Can I pay some more? Because I was told higher the fixed cost, higher the profit. Don't do that. Common sense thinking tells you, if fixed cost will go up, profit will come down. Then how do I mean higher the fixed cost, higher the profit? Imagine, guys, those last five columns are five different companies. First one is A, B, C, D and E. Imagine last year, year one, all five of them had a top line of 100, cost of 80, profit of 20. But what was the difference between the five? The breakup of 80. A's breakup was all variable, no fixed. B's breakup was 60-20. C was 40-40. D was 20-60. E was no variable, only fixed. Between A, B, C, D and E, who has the least fixed cost? A. Who has the highest fixed cost? E. 
next year all five of them worked twice as hard and all five of them managed to double the turnover guys when a's turnover doubled his profit also doubled when b's turnover doubled profit went up three times when c's turnover doubled profit went up four times d five times e's profit went up the most between a b c d and e who has the highest fixed cost e whose profit went up the most e's moral of the story higher the fixed cost higher the profit then why am i saying don't call up your banker how much interest are you charging me on my loan only 10% i'd like to pay 15 don't do that common sense thinking tells you the fixed cost will go up profit will fall then how do i mean higher the fixed cost higher the profit guys between a b c d and e who has the least fixed cost a who has the highest fixed cost e but have you noticed the cost of all five is 80 <laughs> e doesn't have a higher cost e has a higher fixed cost if you unilaterally announce a hike in salary or offer to pay more rent to your landlord your cost will go up your profit will come down guys cost should not go up fixed cost should go up how can fixed cost go up and cost not go up that can only happen if you start swapping what was a variable cost with a fixed cost now this is a little dangerous to understand why let me give you a graphical presentation what does the graph look like if your all your costs are variable guys if sales goes up cost will go up in the same proportion profit will go up in the same proportion all three lines are linear in this situation if sales goes up 10% profit will go up 10% if sales goes up 100% profit will go up 100% but what happens when you have a fixed cost in your costing structure the graph looks like this guys fixed costs also don't remain fixed forever but when they go up they go up with a jerk it's a step graph but in this phase while the fixed cost doesn't go up in the initial period of the business if your fixed cost is high there will also be phases where your sales revenue doesn't even cover the fixed cost that is the phase where a business makes a loss but folks as your sales revenue starts growing first a stage comes which is called the break even point and beyond that if sales continues to grow cost being fixed cost is not growing this gap between income and cost becomes wider and wider and wider this in financial language is called the leverage effect one day i'll talk to you about leverages in greater detail what do leverages denote folks leverages denote a disproportionate impact on the bottom line due to a certain change in top line and leverages are caused by the presence of fixed cost in your costing structure have you noticed no fixed cost no leverages and if you want to enjoy the benefit of leverages you will have to have fixed cost in your costing structure but don't invite fixed costs why what is the beauty of fixed cost beauty of fixed cost is as sales goes up cost don't go up profit gallops forward but guys the risk is what if sales start dropping when sales drop cost don't drop and profits come down equally fast and now that gives you a strategy the strategy is when the markets are booming when the sales is on the upward rise guys examine every head of expense and wherever possible exchange a variable cost with a fixed cost but the moment the downturn starts again examine every head of expense and where possible exchange a fixed cost with a variable cost if your finance management is dynamic you'll get the best of both worlds